Okay, and welcome back to part three. So, once again, we're going to try and continue replacing the kit boxes from around spawn. So, we have halfway done and we're about to start on the third section. So, let's get started. And again, I did that. I think you think by now I'd know how many times to press that button, but I still press it too many times. So, as again, you may have noticed, I have conveniently placed myself by the first location. Um, again, somebody's been here. No name, but it's still nice. All right, so let's get in the air. <clears throat> so the last video, I was having a few issues in getting in the air. It turned out I'd accidentally turned off one of the settings on the um, Litrify, which was what... <clears throat> Sorry, do apologize. Which was, was stopping the wings from opening properly. Um, once I went and checked and saw what the problem was, it was a quick fix and now everything's working back as it should. There we go, see, it's straight in the air. Alright, so let's just quickly check my coordinates. Uh, two, seven, that's five, so we're pretty much okay on this. I remember what part to go. Alright, so having watched back the previous video, I noticed I made a comment about something and we're going west, we need to go east. Yeah, okay, I do this a lot. I head off and then I look at the coordinates and suddenly realise I'm going in the wrong way. Instead of turning and facing the right way to start with and then taking off. <laughs> okay, so back to what I was saying. In the previous one, I made a comment about no longer using a bed for um, respawn. I said I'll explain later, but I never got round to it. I, in honestly, just completely forgot about it. So. I shall go into that this time round. Now, any of us out there who have played vanilla Minecraft, we all aware that setting a bed spawn is normally the best thing to do. However, in this server, <clears throat> not so much. So I did originally have a bed set at my spawn base. Well, when I say base, it's a hole in the ground. You know, I'm stretching the definition of base extremely far on that one. But nearby I had a bed, which I did end up using a couple of times. But as I moved further out, respawning back there I knew would be an issue. So I looked at other alternatives and for a bit I had my bed set in an igloo. I found an area where there was three igloos very close together, within three or four hundred blocks of each other. So I set my spawn in one of them and then left it in the chest in the stove of another so they weren't in the same igloo that way then if anybody found the ender chest they'd have no reason to um, suspect that the actual bed spawn was somewhere else okay so this should be one of the locations if you just give me a second nine two seven and four three one seven so it is the right place so we just need to look for the Shader, here we go. Up, oh. yep, and that's still there. So let's just check to see if it's still got the gear in it. Yep, at some point I will go through what's in here. So you've seen them often enough now, so it's not a big deal. Right, we want to carry on heading east, so let's this time around turn to face the east. So, yes, so I set my spawn at an igloo which is working fine but again as I continue to move around having it set in one place wasn't ideal but it was still better than potentially having to head back to spawn eventually I found a location where I wanted to build my base so I do have a base out there not far from a base I did set a bed as a respawn point, sorry, <laughs> bit of rubber banding it. <sighs> yeah. Okay. Let's just get in the air and then we'll carry on with this conversation. There we go. Don't know why that did that then, but hey ho, these things happen. So yes, so I, I set a bed and started building my base and then once I'd done what I wanted, I went off to do 
a little bit of slamming my face into a piece of obsidian. Yeah. See, this is what happens when you keep looking at a notebook. You're not looking at the screen. It's like driving. You keep your eyes on the road. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so I built my base um, as far as I wanted to do at the time. I decided it was time to go out and do a bit of exploring. At this point, I had sort of myself out with a client and wanted to do a bit more in the way of base hunting and visiting some of the existing bases or the ruins of known bases that were out there. So I had a bed set and as I was travelling around I quite often came across other people's bases, many of them had been griefed, and bed traps where people's beds had been trapped. So if you're not familiar with bed trap, what it is is it gets covered in obsidian and then lava gets put on top of the obsidian. So if you respawn the obsidian forces you to respawn above it, where you then respawn into the lava and are instantly killed, putting you in an infinite loop. So every time I came across one of these, I always removed the trap. So remove the lava, break the obsidian. So if anybody's there, if they're out there somewhere and they've not yet died, they at least have a safe respawn. But it got me thinking, what would happen if somebody found my base? and bed trapped me. I'm playing this on my own, I don't have any of my friends playing online. Very few of them play Minecraft, but other than a few family members and <coughs> children of friends, none of them are really Minecrafters and none of them who do are 2v2 tiers. So if I got trapped I'd have no one to turn to for help. And that scared me a bit. So I'd been using like I said, I've been travelling around a bit, and a few times I would um, go back to spawn. So I'd travel back to spawn, do whatever I wanted, and then die, and then respawn back at my base, using it as a shortcut. The more I thought about that, the more I realised that wasn't a safe uh, option, and we have massively overshot to the east. So I decided to break my bed. So. I was deciding to head back to um, to spawn, so I decided instead of using the bed as a quick way back, I'd take the shortcut back to spawn and then travel a long way back to my base, and then do any base hunting I wanted to do on the return journey. So that's why I don't have a bed set anymore. Now, if the server is ever to update, um, yes, we're looking at you, house. Um, even though um, my last video I did call him a uh, call him a name, so yeah. Hey ho. <laughs> Ho. Hopefully he won't, won't see that, and I won't find myself getting prior banned. But I imagine he's been called a lot worse by other people, and some random woman calling him a narcissist probably is not going to bother him that much. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. So if the server ever updates, my plan is to potentially set myself up with an alt account and set the alt account at my base with a stasis chamber and then use the stasis chamber for travelling back to base easier rather than um, doing the you know, shortcut back to spawn and then having to travel back again. But that's a maybe and they're all dependent on oh, so he's had this one on the server actually updating. And like I said last one, personally I'm not feeling massively optimistic that this will happen. I think it would have he would have done so by now, even if it was not up to the most current version. He potentially could have updated to 1.14 or 1.16. You know, we, we did have that brief spell when he turned off the main server and had everybody playing for a few hours on a test server running on 1.19. I know there's some issues with 1.19 with the um, 
chat reporting. But we don't have to go as far as 1.19. We could just go as far as 1.18. There's no reason to have to go all the way that as far as that. Like I say, we could go 1.16 and stop there for a bit. The fact that very few servers, especially Anarchy servers, are running anything beyond 1.12 says a lot about the fact that the admins are just sort of sitting back and waiting for someone to take the first step. So yeah, I'm, like I say, I'm not massively feeling optimistic on the fact that the server will update. I feel that it could have done so by now. And the fact that it hasn't isn't to do with issues but more a reluctance. Just imagine there will be quite a few teething problems when any server updates. But if you were playing on something like this and you heard like one of the others, like 9B9T, had updated, you'd go to 9B9T. I know I would. I'd be playing on there a lot more than I do on here if they were on a more recent version. It's a risk for whoever goes first, but the prize is going to go to them because a lot of players will start playing on those servers if they're updated. So whoever updates first is going to end up with a massive player base. That players are going to come to them from the other servers because they are going to be the ones who are giving the more recent experience. I have that That's my take on it. I'm not quite sure how we got onto that um, from talking about placing beds. So I have said that I wouldn't grief, and there is one minor exception that I have been doing, which is technically griefing, but there is a good reason for me doing it. And that is whenever I find somebody's bed when I'm a long way out, I tend to break it. Not because they missed out. Sorry, I just saw that and they got slightly sidetracked. Not because I want them to have to go back to spawn or, you know, just to be mean. Is I don't want them getting bed trapped. It's better for them to have, find themselves back at spawn if they die wherever they are than to find themselves in a bed trap. Now, it could be they've got friends online who'd be able to help them if they were. But at the same time, it's kind of one of those being kind, being cruel to be kind situations. Be interesting to see, hear what other people's take on that is. Whether I'm wrong to be destroying people's breads and potentially sending them back to spawn if they die or my reasoning that it's better that than the alternative if somebody else finds it. it it's, it's very much a grey area. It really is. So yeah, that would be an interesting um, conversation to have. And there are times when I thought, mm, I should leave the bed. Ah, the thought lightning stopped. Yes, you may have noticed at one point when we were flying, we did get struck by lightning. That was kind of funny. So, yeah, destroying beds and off. That's, that's, I think, yeah, you know, possibly it'd be interesting to hear other people's take on it. Now, the lightning then just made me think of something. The thing I want to do, if we ever updated past 1.14, and it, it's not a nice thing. You know, I've been saying about doing all these things to help new players and all this lot. There is something I would really like to do, and it, it is it is a little bit toxic. But I will be honest, it would be funny. And that is to get myself a trident, sort it out with um, the usual channeling and loyalty and everything, and to sit up on one of the obsidian roofs during a thunderstorm and just throw the trident at new players. I know, it, it's it's a toxic thing to say, and I probably would only do it once, 
Boy, it'd be funny. It would be so funny. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, you know, let's face it, I am playing on the oldest anarchy server. Being a little bit toxic is... It, <laughs> I wouldn't be a 2v2 player if I wasn't a little bit. Okay, so we're good on that. So we've just got to go... Just got to go a little bit further south. Right, so, okay. <laughs> now, I'm trying to think of something else to talk about. Um, lovely weather we're having. So, bases. So I do have a base, like I mentioned. At the moment, no, I'm not showing anybody it. I do plan on moving bases, though. Now, I am waiting for the server to update. So I keep saying I don't think the server is going to update, and the next breath I'm saying I'm waiting on the server updating. And that is the simple truth. I want to move bases because I don't think I'm far enough out. I'm a good way out, but if we were to update, I feel that I'm too close. We'd need to be further out. So our plan is to move if we update. And one of the reasons I don't want to move beforehand is... Oh, let's just have a look at this. Uh, ah, so yes, yeah, so that, that sign was there the first time around, so that was left by the first person who found the kit here. So, And this is now the third kit going out, so the other one has been found. Oh yeah, <laughs> part two. <laughs> Yeah, the side was taken from there. So yeah, I don't want to move before it updates because I want to make it as hard to find. And there's, if we go past 1.14, there is something that's going to make tracking bases very easy. And that's kelp. Chunks that have already been loaded, especially through some of the larger oceans, are not going to have kelp. It's just going to be this big path showing you where people have flown in the oceans and that is going to make things very easy. I noticed that when again playing on the test servers and I was able even with that client to some degree to follow paths people have been on by using kelp. So that's one of the reasons why I don't want to rush to move my base until after that. Now, if in the meantime I find I've been griefed, in which case then, yeah, I have no problems with doing a video and showing you around my base. I'll probably do a video before it gets found. Well, unless it's already been found, in which case that's a mute point. But I won't upload it. And then if it does ever get griefed, then I can show a before and after. It's only a it's literally this tiny little place. But I like to call it home. Um, I do intend to do a bit more in the way of detailed building on the next one. When I first started playing Minecraft, I did, for a time, actually do builds, put a bit of effort into them. And as time went on and new blocks came out, I kind of stopped bothering to some degree. But of late, I've wanted to start building again. Now, I'm not a great builder, but I think with practice, I could be an okay one. So that would be one of the plans. In fact, after I finish with these kits, I'll be heading back to my base for a bit to gather the resources, because I've had an idea of something I'd like to build in the end dimension. So I'm not going to say what or where. It's just thinking a picture that's sprang into my mind and I thought, yes, it's not ridiculously complicated. So it's not beyond my abilities. But it would push my abilities. And it'd be a bit of fun. So I probably will record when building, though it won't get loaded and then hopefully put it as a time lapse or something 
and then upload it as a later date. So it's going to be a good while before I'm able to redo these kits again. Normally there's a few months between them but it could be closer to six months on the next restocking. Right, so we're about 500 blocks away, so we're a bit far away yet, so let's get back in the air. Right. So some areas you'll find you don't see a lot of destruction to the landscape, and then some of it, you come to some areas and you're just constantly going through one thing after another, and I think, oh yeah, no, a bit further. Just a little bit further. And you come to other areas and it's just literally destruction after destruction after destruction. It's a very, very surreal situation to be in. Right, so I think we are not far. Yes, 5392 and 667. So we need to go this way. I think it's over by where those signs are you can see. Okay, so something's been destroyed or dropped. Oh, so he's had dumped a load of gear. Uh, I'm not seeing any orbs. I'm not seeing anything particularly valuable in there. So I suspect who are... Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, that, yeah. I suspect whoever that was basically cleared their inventory of the um, load of junk. Uh, before moving on. Yeah, like I say, it, it does make my day that. <laughs> Alright, so that's not too bad, so we're at that one. So ironically, I think we've got two more to do. Okay, so off we go again. Now, on the previous video, you won't notice it until it uploads, there's a point where I've had to do some editing because I made a little bit of an error and I didn't realise I'd done it. So I'd set the keybind for starting recording as my left control button. And I thought it was just left control button. But on the client, for free cam, it's right control. So I went to switch on the free cam to look at something and I didn't realise I turned off the recording. And then when I turned off Street Free Cam, I turned the recording back on again. So when I went to watch back the footage, I noticed I had two videos and it cuts off very abruptly. So I had to cut out the bit where it cut off abruptly and make it so it didn't appear too weird, the two bits being put together. So I had to use a program to to do that. Now I'm using a free one because at the moment I don't really want to pay for an editing program if I'm not going to be doing much in the way of editing. If this is something I just do for this one time and then decide you know what nah that's not for me I don't really want to do this anymore. You know it was a fun thing to do as a one-off but I'm not particularly interested. I don't want to go to the expense of having paid for an editing program that I'm never going to use. So just made use of a basic free one. Now the sink there, that's kind of a bit weird. So we're just going to come into... Oh, I think this is actually one of my locations. Oh, yes, so it is. Wow, and then he went straight past that. Let's have a look. Ah, okay. That, oh yes, so that red square there, I think that's a chocolate box. So we're going to go down and investigate that. Uh, not sure that's a good thing or a bad thing. Cody Smile is getting known quite well on the server. Um, not sure really what he's up to, but like I said on the previous one, I'm trying to stay below the radar. And that's not necessarily the sort of person I want finding it, finding out about me. Okay, that sounds bad. Pretty Smile, as far as I'm aware, is one of the the wholesome ones who travels around, visits bases, 
doesn't grieve. And I think maybe a part of the group, don't know for definite, but I think he's part of the group who has been helping people at spawn. So I'm not 100% sure, but I do remember the person who I met that time mentioning, you know, if you need any help, message Cody Smiles. So yes, yeah, so as far as what I'm aware, he's like one of the more wholesome players. But at the same time, he's a member of, if I'm right, he's a member of a group that's starting to become a bit well known. And I kind of don't, <laughs> I don't want to be seen. I, I really do. I just want to be working quietly in the background. I'm, everyone to be completely oblivious to the fact that I exist. And yes, I'm well aware of how daft that sounds as I stand here making a YouTube video. So I'm not talking anything out of that, that chulka. I know the elytra in there needs repairing and stuff, but I'll leave that for somebody who needs it. Um, I have no need to take it so it can stay there. If it had been on the floor and in danger of despawning, then yes, I would have picked it up. Um, but in this situation, no, that can stay there. So, yes, yeah, so if, um, if <laughs> by any chance Cody Soils ever comes across my videos, yes, um, I don't know if you do videos, I've not actually looked, I keep meaning to, but can you kind of pretend you never heard about me, please? That would be much appreciated. Cheers. Alright, so let's carry on. So we need to go a little way back to the east and a fair bit back to the south. So I think it would be best if we can get on the east coordinates first and then work our way from there. Alright, and away we go. Ah, it's not bad. It's not so much bad. Just wings taking off immediately. Not having to spam the space bar to get into the air. Ah, it really, oh, using, the, using this Lictrify makes such a difference. I know there are other settings and I think there's ways of making them work where you literally, it's like having creative flight. I have messed around with it a bit, but I don't know how to make it work and that I, I just end up either hovering in the air or get kicked from the server for flying. So... Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah, there's a, there's lots of settings on the clients which I don't know how they work. It's like with entity speed. You used to be able to use it with boats. Now you just get a lot of rubber banding and get kicked unless you have it set the speed set really low. I think I have to have it as a maximum of 0.5, which means then your speed is sort of like 30 kilometers an hour and that's incredibly slow so it's not really worth doing and even with horses I can have it as high as 0.8 unless it's a particularly fast horse in which then I, I have to have it below point onto 0.7 it seems to be with the, so you don't get kicked the maximum speed a horse can run at is about I think 75 five kilometers, 75, 76 kilometers an hour. Any faster than that you start rubber banding and you either get kicked or you get kicked from the horse. The horse is left where you were and you're back at a good way back and you've got to then walk to catch up with the horse. So to make any use out of it it's not worth having it any faster. I don't doubt there's a way of doing it but you have to be somebody who understands this a lot more than I do. I really don't understand how this all works. I know it's all to do with coding and whatnot. Okay, so we are close. But it looks like there's a bit of destruction here. I think, I know we're about 100 blocks away from where we need to be to the south so we need to go just a little bit further south and we need to go a little bit 
not much but a little bit to the east as well so we'll go on foot at this point now if I remember correctly this is one of the few kits I've left that's actually close to a bigger build so I think we'll just check on this um, if it's still there and if it's not replace it I think it's this pillar here and then we'll move yep it's gone and the item frames also gone oh, luckily I haven't have items frames on me so, <coughs> do apologize so we're just gonna have a quick look yeah I'm not very fast at changing my items and see what the situation is with this build <coughs> <coughs> And then I'm going to be doing some tricing. I'm going to be pausing the recording to take myself somewhere. So I'm going to head to the, another location that's on the list. But it's a place where I don't want anybody to see the quilts for, which is my original base. It's one of the places where I keep a kit. So this has suffered quite a bit of damage. And um, there's quite a lot of holes in this. This was a lot less damaged. However, I think it's one of the locations that was used for the the fight club. Um, I saw a video about it and I recognised this when they were going through locations where they've been hosted. So, yeah, so a few people have been here. But yeah, certainly I've seen a bit of damage. So this one's a bit of a risky one. Originally when I left a kit here it was further down, there wasn't as much here and then I came here and saw it was being developed a lot more and it was a bit of a dilemma whether to move or not. So not worth checking these chests, I've already been down to them many times. So right, so guys this is where I'm going to pause you for a little bit, I'm not going to stop the recording, I'm going to pause it. And then we'll be back when I get to my base and I'll have to make sure I turn off the coordinates at that point. It's one of the places I want to check before we go to the last quarter and that'll be then where I sign off. So hopefully um, I'll be speaking to you all again in a few moments. Bye! Okay and welcome back. So I was originally going to head back to my spawn base and then I remembered two other locations. Now this isn't one, I've just flown past this and went, ha! Huh. So I just wanted to have a quick look at it. So I thought it'd be worth bringing the video back for this. And we're not far from the location. It's just very, very bizarre. Somebody's obviously built this. I'm gonna go down, I think there's a few signs. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, I am very curious. This is a very strange, strange build but kind yeah kind of neat sweet build how's here so it's not new yeah house was here yeah i doubt it very much house was here into it so possibly whoever was there there is a few people who use the name house in their name but it's not the admin so this looks like there's a chest and another sign through here. Just curious, I think. So somebody was here beginning of 2021, 2022. So I just picked up some stuff I don't want. Don't want the melon. Um, yeah. So I hadn't seen that before. Right, yes. As I was about to head off, I remembered about two other locations. Now, these don't have replaceable kits. The kits there are there as a one-off and the idea being that once somebody finds them that's it, they don't get replaced. There's a few other places like that on the server where I've come across builds and I've decided to leave a kit. Um, the furthest one out I think was like one and a half million blocks out. So they're not necessarily near spawn. Okay, so let's get back in the air. And away we go. So originally these two locations were going to wear a part of the original 
places to for kits to go, and they were going to be re replaced over time. But I decided against it because of how far out they were. Not massively, you know, only fourteen thousand blocks out, but it was far enough that it was unlikely they were going to get found. So this is the first one. So as you can see, the kit's still here. Now that has been there since the very first time I visited this island and started doing them. This kit hasn't been found. Okay, let's have a look, make sure it's still full. Yep. So this is why I chose to take this and the next location out of the... Um, places kids being left and replaced because quite simply they weren't being left so this is a bit of a, a weird island so we're going to head inside if we can okay so this apparently has been here since 2017 which is quite possible um, actually a little bit earlier than that it hasn't really seen any destruction or if it has it's been replaced now there is a question of just because somebody puts a date on a sign does it really mean it's been there that long? That's up to you to decide. I do suspect it probably has been here for quite a while. Whether it's been here untouched since 2016, that's quite an ask, but not impossible. All right, so that's the first one. So we've got another one to go to. It's not far off, so let's get back in the air. Yep, bit of lag there. And away we go. Ah, oh yes. It's so it's nice of being able to take off straight away. So just got a little bit of a way about maybe a thousand blocks in each direction. So it's not far. So I'm sure I can keep wittering for that length of time. It's actually one of the things I'm finding very, very strange. So, Whenever I've been playing Minecraft or other games in the past, I've not really struggled to talk. <laughs> okay, I'm going to sound like a turtle looney tune. I do find myself talking to myself when I play video games, as if I'm having a conversation with somebody who's sitting next to me. I find that sometimes it helps me to understand what I'm doing and what's going on. Now, something like Minecraft, that's not really a big deal. Um, but with some other games, it does sort of help. Right, I think... Now this... Yeah, this is where the other one is. Now this has had... Uh, yeah, this has had a lot of destruction. This did not look like this. Last time I was here. So, originally... This was a tree plantation, and it had been so for quite some time. So somebody has griefed this. Now the kit I placed, I believe, was on one of the trees. So whether it's been found, in which case the person found it is probably the one who griefed the place, or... It's been destroyed when the place was griefed. So I'm just going to have a quick peek because there are still some items floating around. So if it's a case that it was not noticed, then there's a chance that the items are still here. But I think I'm not seeing. Let's just have a look down here. What's under here? worth checking. So it's a bit of a shame. I, I kind of hope it's a hard one. If the person who found it was the griefer, would they rather it was blown up? If it hadn't been found, do I want it to have been blown up? Does that make sense? So 11, 4, 3, 3. So let's get to the exact Coordinates. So look at these signs. Okay, so a lot of these, so a lot of these signs were 
done before this was griefed just having a look yeah so I stopped here the last time on the 25th of August yeah <sighs> that's a shame it was a it was a nice little oasis but it's one of those things it happens let's just have a look at these two signs let's see that's an old one that's an old one all right oh uh, well a little bit disappointing to see but it was inevitable and it's amazing it lasted as long as it did. So like I say, it was a and there was a couple of melons and it was mainly a tree plantation with quite a few trees on there and the kit was placed on the back of a tree. So it was facing out so it wasn't too obvious to be seen. But if you're looking around, especially if you spotted the sign, it would be found. So the fact there's no signs here saying anything, you know, about it, about it. Cause I would imagine if whoever griefed it might have left something mocking in that for for me before destroying it. So, oh well, rip this location, All right? So <laughs> I'm gonna pause you again, <laughs> and this time around I'm gonna this definitely head back to my spawn base. So I'll see you guys again soon. Bye. Hi and welcome back. So we are now near where my original spawn base is. So I've just stopped briefly. I want to see, well I can see my bed is still there, but I want to see if anyone's found it and trapped it. So like I say, my spawn is no longer set to this bed, but this is where I placed it. So a little bit precarious, but it was a little bit away from where my original spawn base is, which you can just see over there. And then I placed gear in here, and it's just a pillar of soil all the way up, so it was easy to get out if I had to respawn after dying here. So I just wanted to check, and no, no one's bed trapped it. Right, so you may have noticed I've turned off my coordinates now because this is a location where I don't want to broadcast where it is. So I do have Fulbright on, so I might turn that off as well, just for a second, because I tried to make it as hard as possible, as possible to find where that is. So, okay. Did I turn? No, I did. I must have pressed the wrong button. Uh, no, I don't even have extra tab on. Okay, right, so I've turned Fulbright off. So the plan was to make it as hard as possible for people to find where my base was unless you knew where to look and you were using hacks. And the simple way by doing it is by making the entrance look like a normal entrance. So originally this was granite, but I'll explain why that's not the case in a minute anymore. So let's just place them back just in case anyone comes along and we'll head down. So this was founded back in February of this year, not long after I started. And in that time, as far as I'm aware, only one person has found this. And that one person <laughs> must have had hacks going and saw the ender chest. So they mined down, accidentally breaking the item frame and the original sign. So I have since replaced them and they've filled in the hole so it's not quite so obvious. But I left the sign that they left. Because, yeah, you know, it's part of the history. So this was my original little ho hobbit hole. So a farm. Um, I did have an anvil here originally, but I think I took it with me when I moved on. And I still keep some bits and pieces in here. There's even a shulker with a few picks, which I think I grabbed when I was end busted. So there's nothing, yeah. 
these were from end busting so useful but not anything I particularly need so I thought leave them here if anybody finds this place they have access to it and we're just going to go into free cam again for a second so as you can see it's just a mass of random tunnels so I had at this point downloaded x-ray and I was using it to find just as many diamonds as possible and also as many emeralds because this comes under um, Rocky Mountains so emeralds are available I think is that the key bind? Nope, that one. Nope. Right, bear one second. Because I've turned off the HUD, because that's what turns on the, um, the coordinates. It's inside there. I didn't really want to show my coordinates. So let's put Fulbright back on and let's just have a look underneath so you can see a bit better now. Yeah. Just massive, massive mess of me mining out randomly so let's one last thing and turn on okay oh there we go let's get this wall hack on this one and not x-ray okay so welcome to my first little home anyway so <laughs> after that little bit of randomness i think we'll end here i'll get myself sorted and head back off to the last and final section and try and think of some things to talk about. So thank you for stopping by. Hope you have a great rest of your day. And this is me signing off. Bye.